Today, May the 3rd, is World Press Freedom Day, a day set aside by the United Nations General Assembly to raise awareness on the importance of freedom of the press. World Press Freedom Day was proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly in 1993 following a recommendation adopted at the 26th session of UNESCO's General Conference in 1991. This followed a call by African journalists who put together a statement of free press principles in 1991 called the Vinduk Declaration on Media Pluralism and Independence. The event also serves to remind governments of their duty to respect and uphold the rights of freedom of expression enshrined under Article 19 of the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Well, here in Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari has offered assurances of an unhindered access for the media to perform its functions, he insists that responsibility is reciprocal, and asks journalists to be mindful of fairness, justice, and national interest at all times. In a statement, the president says, quote, the media can count on us to keep our word, but we also want to be fairly reported. The media should hold ethics of the noble profession sacrosanct and be wary of those bent on causing disaffection in the country. He adds, as we approach general elections next year, let our journalists resolve to report the process fairly and without bias, irrespective of who is involved. That would be the very essence of World Press Freedom Day. End of quote. Meanwhile, human rights group Amnesty International has appealed to the Nigerian authorities to desist from what it calls the disturbing patterns of using security agencies to silence dissenting voices. The group in a statement criticized the crackdown on some journalists and bloggers by the security forces. The US consulate has organized a symposium aimed at drawing attention to the importance of the media in strengthening democracies. Speakers at the event held in Lagos include human rights activists, the academia, members of the Nigerian Union of Journalists and the Nigerian police. They all gathered to brainstorm on the role of the media in stabilizing Nigeria's democracy. Based on my experience, I know that as reporters and editors, each of you has an important role to play in the electoral process. The discussion began with the U.S. Consular General, Mr. John Bray, agreeing that democratic societies are not infallible but are accountable. And as Nigeria approaches its 2019 elections, the media are considered the convert to credible elections and an informed electorate. When people don't have the facts, they make them up. And that creates an unstable environment rife with rumors, gossip, and lies, and the, new, and the new buzzword is fake news. Everything's fake news if you don't believe it. <laughs> However, it's you, the people in this room and your colleagues, who make sure this doesn't happen. Other invited speakers suggested ways to provide the media an enabling environment to ensure that elections are free and fair. The thing about the Fusion Center is it gives you multi-dimensional election coverage capabilities. In addition to sensory capabilities, you can deploy algorithmic capabilities. And so you can bring memory to bear. And right now, I do think we need to do that. As well as of sensational electoral reports, Promotion of voter education and helping to set an agenda for the election. It is the agenda that the mass media have to set that will define the nature of the contest. The issue of safety also came up during the discussion, and the Zonal Public Relations Officer of the Nigeria Police Zone 2 Command, S.P. Dolako Badvas, highlighted journalist safety in volatile situations. At the end of the day, the goals are simple. And what is the goal? Good reportage embedded in safety. The president, Nigeria Guild of Editors, Ms. Funke Egbemode, wraps it up with some advice for fellow journalists as they cover the upcoming elections. It is very important that we stay alive around to continue to do what we are trained to do, to continue to help safeguard the society and the democracy that we paid 
a sacrifice to bring. The U.S. consulate says it will be organizing regular training for 100 journalists across Nigeria to help the media further appreciate the responsibility of reporting accurately. You're watching the News at 10 live from Lagos. Let's quickly shift gears now to our Abuja studios with Malpe Ogun Yusuf. Malpe. Hello, Gimba. It's good to see you. Leaders of the South and Middle Belt are asking the National Assembly to revisit the clause for devolution of powers, which was rejected in the ongoing constitution amendment process. The President General of Ohaneze Indigo, Chief John Nyawondo, made the call during a visit to the Senate President at the National Assembly. He says there's over-concentration of power in the federal government contrary to the agreement that Nigeria's forefathers entered into. He also condemned the executive for what he terms the flagrant disregard for the legislative arm of government, which he says was demonstrated with the recent invasion of the Senate by thugs and the refusal of the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, to honor the summons of the Senate. On his part, Senate President Bukola Saraki says the National Assembly is ready to play its role to ensure that the country continues on the path of democracy and growth. So we believe that many of the problems we have in our country emanate from the constitution of our country. We know that the National Assembly has had debate on devolution of powers. And we know, Mr. President, that you did promise the nation that you will have a revision to this issue. We have come to ask you to bring up the revision. We consider it urgent and inevitable. Because we believe that all the problems we have today in Nigeria emanate from the fact that our constitution is not ripe for a country constituted by people of diverse culture, diverse political persuasions as our country. We want a restructured Nigeria. We want a restructured Nigeria. The alternative, Mr. President, will be worse than the situation we have today. Talking about the constitutional amendment, this National Assembly, on our own initiative, started the process of constitutional amendment. We know that there were areas after the first that did not pass. The pollution is one, a few others. And we promised Nigerians that we would go back and do that. And I'm happy to report to you that we have done a report. We just finished it, we just want to finish the passing of the budget. The report has even been laid. We just want to finish the passage of the budget and then we'll consider the report. Now the House of Representatives says it will pass the 2018 budget before the end of next week. House Committee Chairman on Media and Public Affairs made the statement while briefing journalists at the end of Thursday's plenary of the House had earlier promised to pass the budget before the end of April. He further says the three-day suspension of plenary in solidarity with Nigerians regarding the killings across the country will be communicated after the budget is passed. And just how is Nigeria-China relations? I guess Anne has got news in that regard. It's over to you now, Anne. You first. First Bank. Thank you, Mark. And yes, you're right. The Central Bank of Nigeria has now announced the execution of a bilateral currency swap agreement with the People's Bank of China. The CBN governor, Godwin Emefiele, and Dr. Yi Gang of the People's Bank of China signed the deal in Beijing. The transaction, which is valued at 16 billion yuan, and that's about $2.5 billion, aims to provide adequate security and local currency and liquidity to Nigerian and Chinese industrialists. The CBN sees the deal as improving the speed, the convenience and volume of transactions between both countries. Now, this deal, which took over two years of negotiations, makes Nigeria the third African country to sign such an agreement with the Chinese bank. 
Africa's biggest mobile phone operator, we're talking about MTN Group, says that it has recorded 9.1% increase in its revenue for the first quarter of this year, ended March the 31st. The South African-owned telecoms company has attributed the stronger-than-expected performance to its revenue to growth from its Nigeria and its Ghana unit. Meanwhile, the telecoms operator says that it is making good progress on processes for its initial public offering in Nigeria and it has already received all required regulatory approvals to proceed with the IPO in Ghana expected to launch later this month. The Nigerian stock exchange's main index slipped to negative territory today as investors react to the unimpressive first quarter results from the international brewers, also following a loss after tax of 2.24 billion naira. Let's hear more from Tenyola Shibawali. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The Nigerian stock market reversed previous gains on Thursday as the key broad index shed 0.48%, courtesy of losses recorded by market heavyweight Dangote Cement. Investors also reacted to the news of Forte Oil's plan to divest subsidiaries in Nigeria and Ghana, sending its shares to a one-week low. This rubbed off on the oil and gas sector's performance, causing a 0.78% decline. Unity Bank had the best price in performance, contrary to the highest 8.3% profit taken in international breweries. Over 320 million units of shares were traded, with banking stocks dominating the top trade list. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Teniola Shubawale. Thank you, Tenny. Our major world stock markets have finished today's session in the red. As investors monitor inflation data, U.S.-China trade talks and new earnings reports across the region. Let's check out the numbers. Thanks a lot for watching Business News tonight. I'm Anne Umawado. It's back to you, Gimba. You first. First Bank. Elder statesmen, retired and active politicians in Nigeria have paid tribute to the late leader of the Yoruba Social Cultural Group of Feniferi and National Democratic Coalition Nadeko Senator Abraham Adesanya. The leaders who gathered at the 10th Memorial Anniversary Lecture of the former Nadeko leader yesterday took time to reflect on the state of the nation, sharing their idea of true leadership and proffering solutions to the many problems facing the nation. It is a class outing by many standards. Considering the role of eminent Nigerians present here, it is the 10th memorial anniversary lecture of former Afeniferi National Democratic Coalition Nadeko leader, the late Pa Abraham Adesanya. Apart from the huge presence of some of his past allies and friends, former leaders, some of those who have not been seen in public together in a long time, are seated side by side, a sort of rallying point of some intellectual climate and also a reunion of some sort for many. The theme of the lecture is leadership and the future of Nigeria. A former military head of state, Abu Salami Abubakar, is the chair. He gave the premise for the conversation. I relied on his advice together with others with whom we piloted the transition program. Getting Nigeria to work again becomes a subject on the leaves of many of the elder state men who were part of the panel and some of those who took to the podium. Restructuring found his way into the agenda. I therefore call on our governments and lawmakers to heed the growing warnings of potential national disaster by agreeing to adopt a restructured true federalism. So the answer is clear. As far as Nigeria is concerned, if the leadership of Nigeria wants to regard themselves as leaders, 
the, we need to get together very, very quickly, restructure this country, and let each section of the country develop its own resources and produce wealth for its own people. It wasn't a gathering where only problems or drawbacks were mentioned for sound bites. What Nigerians must do to ensure the nation works was prioritized. Nigerians, any leader who does not recognize that the cost of our underdevelopment, the cost of our bickering, the cost of our mixed standards is the fact that we do not have a restructured nation. Don't vote for him. Pa Abraham Adesanya will be remembered as one of those who helped to fight for Nigeria's democracy. Ten years after he left us, his legacies still remain. My prayer is that the legacy of Badesaya may continue to influence and inspire the way things move in this country. Shinwaki Mbalui for Channels Television News. Still ahead on the news at 10, all set for the draw ceremony of the Lagos preliminaries for season 10 of the Channels International Kids Cup. That's the sports news. Stay with us.